guys and girls, welcome back to the channel. Today I have got the 2021 Audi RS4 Avant. Now this is a car that I've been looking forward to getting my hands on for a good while because obviously I had the RS6, had the G80 M3 and I'm in that point now where I've sold the F80 and I'm looking for something new to get for next year because you know, we need a car that does miles, does the thing, makes you smile and is also super useful and fast. I know that's a lot of categories to try and tick all the boxes in. At the end of the day, we're fussy at this time of our lives, aren't we? We've got lots of things to do, work, carry the dog around, be able to get to different places here and there, nice and quick, but also look stylish. So, one of the reasons why I really wanted to get the RS4 was because the RS6 for me, I just felt like I was gonna lose my license all the time because the thing was so fast and also massive and fuel economy, and don't get me wrong, everybody loves the RS6, it's a legend, it's a great car, it's menacing looking, but also it's 120 grand, and if you're going to use it as a daily, you're not going to get good mileage out of it, it's going to cost you a lot of money per month, and just doesn't tick my boxes for what I want or need in a, in a daily. Now, I've always been famously a two-wheel drive girl, so Quattro to me is a mystery, and I've been thinking, maybe, is it time to make the switch to a four-wheel drive car for an everydayer? Could be. This car has mightily impressed me. The main thing that I've noticed about this car is you get all of the looks, you get the performance, you also get a slightly smaller package, better MPG, and about 30 grand cheaper in the RS4. What's not to love? This is the Sonoma Green B9.5 RS4. Now, 9.5 because it's simply just a facelift version of the previous. And so they've done a few things here and there. But I think, first of all, the first thing we need to look at is obviously the color, Sonoma Green. What do you guys think of it? It's quite a bit of a brighter green, I find, than some of the sort of more British racing green. It's got a very much a gold fleck in it. But to be fair, I've had this car for just over a week now and everywhere I go, people comment on the colour of it. They think it's awesome. It's actually quite fetching when you uh, put it into the background of here at Wapham Ray. You can kind of, I keep parking it in front of hedges and sort of seeing the contrast. But ostensibly, looking at the car, it's a very good looking machine. It's like a more paired back RS6, if you will. You still get that really aggressive front end there. It's kind of obviously made a little bit smaller. You've got these really aggressive intakes here. Um, you've got the matrix lights, which the RS6 has, which I think are a huge feature. I absolutely love them. Um, I'll put a little uh, cutaway of them doing their thing there. Ostensibly, it's a great looking machine. Do you know, I'd put a little splitter there. I already like the sills on it. This particular one is pretty much just a stock car. I mean, it's got a storage pack and it's got this paint is actually an option that you can get. But other than that, this is pretty much your RS4 as it comes, no trick bits here and there. And it's a good looking machine. I really do like it. I mean, the arches have been pulled about 30 mil wider from the previous generation. There has been some comments here and there about the brakes saying if you don't get the ceramics over the steels, the stocking pair is a little bit compromised, but I actually haven't noticed it because I haven't been massively hammering around on a track. It's always one of those things that you find out once you really, really uh, put the car to the end of its paces. Coming around the back, obviously, pan roof, typical RS sort of nice black accents there. I like the gloss back apron at the back with the oval tailpipes. It's all very RS. But look, I mean, this car on the road is £81,000. If you go up to an RS6, you're obviously looking at 120. This is a little bit smaller. It's super quick still, 450 brakes, 600 newton meters of torque. It's all coming from that 2.9 uh, litre V6 twin turbo. That's all you need, lads. It's a very, very handy, useful car. I mean, obviously I've been doing some shoots and stuff. I've got all my things in the back and it's incredibly comfy. I've done a lot of miles in it. And I tell you what, it is the ultimate mile muncher. And just loads of space to boot. I mean, we've got dogs. You can very easily fit your dogs in there, no problem at all. These seats are unbelievably comfortable. I've done miles and miles and miles. I always love the trim level of Audi. They've always pretty much smashed it. I mean, the digital dash, the MMI system. I actually kind of like the integrated dash a little bit more in the RS6. You've got the screen up here, but again, minor, minor, minor. And they've got good 
buttons for things it's not all touch screen so you don't get lost in the dashboard trying to figure out how to i don't know bloody put the uh parking brake on or something like that if i was to buy one of these i don't think i'd get it in this color i'd probably go for the red that they have but you know it sits on 20s you could just put a little front splitter on there and she's good to go i kind of like the matte black uh rails on the top there as well she is a peach i was very lucky in the early days to sort of drive the b6 uh, and the B7 RS4s and do you know what I think sometimes they miss a trick by not having a saloon version of this but this is what Audi does they make super quick advance it's gonna be very interesting when the G80 M3 Touring comes out because that's supposed to have some serious horsepower figures but trust me guys this is totally totally capable the Quattro system and their torque vectoring and the way it all locks up together it is frighteningly fast off the line for what appears to be a family wagon. They are like the ultimate sleeper, really. Whereas this, 
I feel like any idiot could send it into a bend at about 90 and it's going to get itself out of trouble. I was so impressed with the way this thing drives and also like how quick the pickup is as well. Considering sometimes, maybe when it's in comfort, if you do smash your foot on the accelerator, there is a tiny bit of lag, but as I said, it's in RS mode now. And it delivers so much fun and power to the wheels, pretty much immediately, that I was like, what more do you want? I mean, this is obviously 450 brakes, 600 newton meters of torque. Now, I always think that sub 500 on the road is a sweet spot, because once you're starting to get above 500, you're genuinely getting into a spot where, I don't know, it's super duper easy to lose your license when you're not even concentrating. That's the thing that I found with the RS6. Like, I had to be so alert or using the um, adaptive cruise all the time because the thing was just ruthless. Great if you're just cruising around, but I like to drive my cars on a little bit, which is why I like to have a lower horsepower so I could drive it on, but I'm not necessarily, you know, breaking the sound speed barrier. This has got an amazing pickup to it. I've just really enjoyed it. And it, we, even though it is an event, it's a car that doesn't necessarily feel like you're driving a bigger state car. It still feels nimble and agile. Styling wise, it's not as Larry as I'd like it to be. The RS6 obviously has that huge road presence, but they've taken a lot of the DNA of that. And you can definitely see it in the front of this, you know, it's got the big angular uh, side vents there and all, you know, they've got the matrix lighting and everything like that. It's got enough, oh, Jimny. Um, not enough of the DNA that you feel like you're kind of buying a baby RS6, but you know, you're not incurring the cost and also the speed awareness course and also the size of the bloody thing. This is just a little bit smaller. It's a little bit more usable for every single day and the fuel economy. Again, guys, this is how you know I'm definitely getting up there to the end of my, <laughs> the end of my twenties. Fuel economy. I've done a couple of runs to and from London with this thing and mind you, mind the fuel shortage because obviously that's the thing right now. Um, you can get almost 30, I think I've got 31.2 mpg, which is again, not amazing. But when you think about what this thing is, it's, it's a 2.9, it is a fast Audi wagon. It's okay, I can live with that. Considering, you know, when I was in the RS6, I was nigh on, I don't know, it felt like I was doing about 15, 16 miles to the gallon in the thing. But she looks great. I'm mightily impressed. And also Audi have always kicked it out of the park with their interiors incredibly comfy seats now when i was looking in the m3 i wanted the carbon seats because you need the carbon seats to make the car special i think personally seats in this interior the perforated leather uh, steering wheel everything like that just makes it a really really lovely car and a nice cabin to be in but they've always smashed it out of the park with their interiors also with the ambient lighting as well i've got it set in green so it kind of matches the outside minor things but it's all about the comfort these days so yeah, I'm going to say it. I think that the RS4 is a better value proposition over the RS6. Quite like it. Am I ready to go from two-wheel drive to four-wheel drive though? I guess if it's as fast as this, then maybe yeah. Jesus. <laughs> so that is the RS4 event. Now look, it's 80 grand on the road, this one. She's a nice machine but it's a lot of money to spend on a daily car. So if you're gonna spend that sort of cash, you can get one of these around the 80 grand mark or you can get a GATM3. It's a lot of money. It feels like everything's got so much more expensive, right? If I had to choose between the M3 and this, I think I'd probably still have to go for the M3. I don't know, maybe this. Maybe this is what I need to do. Maybe I'm gonna become a four wheel drive girl. You can still like semi drift a four wheel drive, I think. Nah, I don't know. Right guys, thanks so much for joining me on the video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you think I should get one of these? Other than that, take care of yourselves. I'll see you on the next video. Sorry it's been a bit late. You know what my schedule's like at the minute. BBC and Gas Stuff is pretty much taking over my life at the minute. But on that note, I have some really, really exciting news coming up for you guys. I will be joining a new show thing. I'm not gonna say anything more about it, but yeah, stay tuned for that announcement. Oh my God, and anyway, it's a good job I finished my video now because it is so loud on here. Guys, take care of yourselves. See you soon, and I'll uh, see you on the next video. Bye.